I've been wanting to get my feet wet with CNC machines. I've never had a CNC machine before. I've never used one, but I did not want to spend a ton of money to see if I was going to like it. So I think this is going to be the best value for a desktop CNC. So let me show you what I found that makes this machine stand out over a lot of the other bigger, more well-known machines. One of the very first things in the box was this card or after sales service. And then they also have a QR code right on the side of the machine so you will not be able to lose the paperwork to contact them for them to warranty or take care of anything that goes wrong with this machine. And for them to put that right on the side of the machine, that tells me that they are standing behind these machines. The machine comes with the 150 watt spindle and I used it and did some great carbons. I'll show you here in a second whenever uh, I start testing the machine. And it worked great, but for me, I want to get work done. I want to get it done quick as I can, and I want to see if I can put out some production. So if you're just doing acrylics and wanting small, detailed uh, engravings, this spindle worked really good. But when you start plunging this in, you know, a quarter inch into a piece of wood, it just doesn't have the power. But one thing that I really liked about this machine is it came with the bracket. So I did not have to purchase anything additional. If I have, you know, I've already got four or five little palm routers laying around and this is just a standard 65 millimeter palm router. And the bracket came with the kit. So you was able to grab any little palm router and mount in here. Now this particular one, I'll put a link in the description. It was like a hundred dollars. And one of the cool things about it is it's got a plug right here because another great thing about this particular machine is that it comes with the Z height probe and you have to connect it onto here and then it goes down and touches. And like with 3D printers, that's one of the hardest things is for people to get that Z height set perfect. And whenever it touches, it makes that arc. But with this being connected and being plugged in, it's picking up the ground. So it throws an error code. And so you have to unplug that while you're doing your Z height. And you know, with it being a plug right there, I'm able to pop that off, do my Z height, plug it back in real quick. Now I'm probably going to go ahead and get a relay set up on that. But you know, again, I have no experience whatsoever with CNC's and I was just wanting to know, am I going to be able to get this thing to even work? But I was watching some other reviews and when you put this router head on the front, now this is a whole lot heavier than this right here. And some of the other bigger brands uh, that are doing this 40 by 40, which is 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter, which gives you about a 16 by 16 bed, which to me is about the smallest that I think is going to be workable. But whenever they were doing this here, the whole head would move. And I mean, this, you see, I can pick this whole machine up by this router and it doesn't move. This thing is solid. And that's why I picked this machine over, you know, those other ones you see on Amazon that are real popular because with those, you know, there's some reviews out there, you watch them, they just move this a little bit and this whole head up here will wiggle and you're not gonna get good repeatable results, especially if you're pushing the machine hard. All right, so wanting to make sure that this machine is gonna be accurate, because that to me is one of the most important things is accuracy and repeatability. You know, I like to set up jigs and then I wanna be able to, when I get my file set up, just throw the board in there, hit the button, walk away, and then, you know, spend 30 seconds on a setup and then come back, you know, later, pick it up and throw it, uh, another board in there and do another one. You know, that's the only way you're gonna make money with anything is if you can do it quickly and efficiently. And now we're trying to go with a budget machine because many of these machines are starting out in the several thousand of dollars and this machine is just ridiculously cheap so as you see it's just a single line i'm engraving here now it does have a little tail on the beginning and the end and that's because my inexperience i left the button for the lead in and lead out clicked and so it did put a lead in and lead out but other than that this thing cut my logo perfectly so now after I ran my logo there, 
I went ahead, I rehomed the machine so that the head was moving around. You see right here, I reset my Z height and then I reran that same file. I unchecked the lead in and lead out so it didn't do the little pigtails on the edges, but it ran over the, the same file and you couldn't even tell that it was done twice, which is exactly what I was looking for, which shows me that I can repeat the same file over and over and it's gonna come out exactly the same every time. Now I've never put a CNC machine together before. I've done a bunch of 3D printers, but like on this little bracket right here, this screw sticking out here, that just went in here to set, to hold this at the exact right height to get these screws started. And that's the only reason that this bracket up here was there is just to make it easier in assembly. And those little things really, you know, stand out to me. And they've thought about a lot of stuff too. If you're gonna put a big piece of wood up in here, you know, you can just flip this control panel out and now this thing is wide open. The one on the back comes off and you can lay a big wide board up here and engrave out on the middle of it. So, I, you know, there's so many little things. And now also on a lot of those big name brand ones, you see how this has got the metal shields that come up and that protects your wheels and rollers to keep the dust from getting, you know, the sawdust to getting into your wheels and causing problems. As you can see, I don't have the hundreds of thousands of subscribers like some of these big YouTubers out here. You know, most of the stuff that I do, I'm spending my own money on, and it's just stuff that I want, um, or it's uh, smaller, cheaper things, so I don't get these big, you know, multi-thousand dollar machines sent to me. But I really have been wanting to get into CNC, so that's what I loved about this little machine is it was economical, but then... I was able to use my Fusion software that I use to create my models and stuff with my 3D printer. And, you know, do just like I do with the 3D printer or my laser files, I, I created this little tray here, and then I made a three different G files, and I was able to go in there, and right now I'm selecting a quarter-inch end mill, and now that quarter-inch end mill is going to run around and take out the majority of the material. And this is where it's so important that I have that repeatability because I am going to have to remove that bit out of the router and then put another bit in there. And I'm having, because I don't have a lot of bits yet, I went from this quarter inch end mill down to a eighth inch uh, end mill with a eighth inch shank so i had to change out the collet and everything on this router and i needed it all to line up exactly perfect now i'm sure that once i get to using the machine more i'll be able to figure out feeds and speeds but i didn't even go in and look up and see what i could do i just ran basically the defaults that were there in uh, fusion 360 i did cut them way back um you know as far as the depth and this is about a little over a one inch thick piece of wood. And so I think I was dropping about four, you know, about three sixteenths of an inch per pass because I didn't want to go in and break, you know, bits right off the bat. But I figured, you know, what the heck, I'll go ahead and run it conservative. And then I will speed it up every time until I can find the actual limit of the machine. But after I ran it with that quarter inch end mill, I put in this eighth inch end mill, and as you see on the lines there, that quarter inch, there's a lot of lines that are smaller than the quarter inch, and so by dropping back to that eighth inch, I'm able to get a lot more detail in there, and then it runs a, a finer, uh, I think about a 0.2 millimeter pass over there that really gets everything smooth over almost as much that there was very minimum sanding that I had to do after I was actually finished uh, running this. So here I went ahead and put the quarter inch um, collet back on, used this 30 degree uh, quarter inch V-bit and went to cut these stars. Now the way I did the stars was as I made them at a 30 degree uh, angle from the tips to the center and so as it uh, goes in and cuts them it gets deeper. Uh, just kind of like a, a good quality flag uh, that's sewn you know, you'll see the threads kind of, you know, give it that 3D effect going the opposite kind of from the tips and then get thicker in the center. So uh, I really like the way that turned out. And I'm just blown away that I was able to, with no experience, get this machine up and going. And, you know, after using it, uh, you know, I've spent, you know, several hours with the machine. 
you know, the machine itself has worked flawless. Any errors were my fault. You know, and and I really like the fact that it's like it's got an LED lights to light up the area. And there's just so many little things about this machine. The more I use it, the more I'm glad that I picked this one over those more popular brands. Now, I was really impressed with the machine, but it is one, one of the more economical ones out on the market. Not the cheapest, but what I feel is the best value because it is a very solid and very rigid machine. However, once I put on this big uh, router here and I did not have the dust collection connected in the beginning, it was throwing up a lot of sawdust in this little rail up here, got packed in and was causing me some issues. Um, another issue I had is I did not tighten up my bit tight enough to begin with. And so whenever I was trying to cut this, you know, the first pass and it would come back with the second pass, it was not cutting as deep because the bit went up. Once I figured that out and tightened that bit up, you know, that worked out great. You know, and again, it is not perfect. You know, the way the uh, connectors or wires up here, you know, whenever I am using with the router, it throw, does throw some dust and I don't have good dust collection yet. And, you know, so it's not refined in where all the wires connect, but, you know, it is very functional. I wish they had a place for the probe holder to go, you know, something like that. But those are little small things. And for the price, I don't think you're going to find a higher quality machine. I mean, it's got the nice uh, cable management. You know, we've got cable chains, drag chains on the front and the back. We got dual stepper motors, you know, for our uh, Y. Our X has just got the single one. We've got the um, screw with linear rails for our Z. Uh, it came with the clamps. It came with our, you know, uh, spool board here. Everything came in the box. It even had bits and stuff. I did buy their little uh, kit that, you know, comes with four or five bits. And I'll put some links in the description for that. But, man, I don't think you're going to get, for the price, a better, higher quality machine. I mean, I don't know if it's coming across, but just how crisp those stars are. And they're not just uh, flat. You know, I have them going in at a 30-degree angle, uh, that dragon. And then like this is two passes. And I mean, you can't tell it. It looks like a single pass, which just tells me how, the accuracy of this machine. So until next time, I hope everybody has a wonderful day and see you on the next one.